everybody and welcome back in today's episode i'm going to be making uh some armor from fallout 4. a lot of people like the combat armor but i love the metal armor which is usually mostly used by the scavengers and the raiders but i like the look of it it was very kind of crazy and organic so i went ahead figured out the patterns and made them available in my shop so i'm going to show you the patterns and how you go about putting them together so if you guys are ready let's get started all right, in this video, I'm gonna take every part one by one. So particularly, we're gonna start with the chest piece right here. This is the left side. And of course, I made it onto a poster board template. I like the best. We're gonna lay this guy down and we're going to trace it. On the edges, on the top where this is going to connect, this is a 90. So we're gonna cut that straight with the blade, straight up and down. Now for all the edges here on the armor, to do a bevel, and I like doing the bevel cuts because it just makes the armor look a little thinner than it actually is. Same thing here, but this is a straight edge. So I like to use a metal straight edge when cutting a bevel. Ah, man, nothing dulls a blade faster than soft foam. Now this is the center part of the chest, so this needs to be 90, so we're gonna glue it to another piece. Make sure it's nice and flat, straight up and down. There you go. Top part, same thing, gonna bevel that in. Follow that line. We're going to flip this pattern and take the pattern itself, flip it as well. And we're going to transfer these lines. These are our cut lines. And I'll show you what I mean by that, is this is where we're gonna cut our trench for the foam. And if you can see these lines, I wanna go ahead and just connect them. These corners right here, we're gonna cut these out at a bevel. So I'm gonna go in an angle, get that cut, nice angle. Same thing on this side, I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna gun it so you can see right here, I'm coming in at an angle, like that, like that. And then come around the other side, complete. There you go, I got a notch out. Now, these lines right here, the, I use the, the Sharpie line, so I put the blade on the opposite side and I just cut it like I'm doing, I'm kind of visually cutting underneath it. So I don't want to go too far, I just want to go right here. Just like that. And then you flip around to the other side and do the same thing. What you're doing is you're cutting a little trench out. Ah, there we go, nice. Same thing here. Voila. Now that we did this, uh, I put these lines in the front. So what you use, sometimes I'll take that line and fold it. So I know it's where it's gonna be. And I'll take my rotary tool. Cause even though I cut it down, it's kind of a little uneven. So I like to kind of clean up a little bit and grind off the excess foam on the sides. See that folds in this way we have the dart. Cause our plan is we'll glue this and contact these two together. Here are the patterns, of course, you can see there's a right and a left. Uh, when you trace them, you can just go ahead and do what I do and put them together. You can see your transfer lines um, and your holes for your ropes and the whole details for the rivets. Oop, as you can see, I went ahead to save time and trace it all out. Now for the holes right here, uh, of course, I use a, a brass tube, but a new little trick I learned is I put my brass tube on the end of a drill. Watch this. <laughs> Bang, right? A lot faster than doing it by hand. So if you do have a big tube, put a drill on it, boom, done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little heat shaping. And now we're going to go ahead and curve these straps. I'm going to go ahead and heat it up a little bit in the center. And I like to just kind of do a little bit of a, a little bit of a bow on it. Kind of bend a little bit. See, nice little curve to it. All right, that is our chest piece. Now we'll move on to the back piece, which you can see here, the left is the same as the right. You just flip it and trace it, which I went ahead and did that already. We have right here. Now again, I got lazy and just did two pieces to save some foam, but you can just trace like I did with the chest piece, flip it, trace it, keep it as one piece. Um, 
Uh, went ahead in the back, dribbled, got all ready. So all this has to be is heated. This is the ab armor right down here. When same thing, you guys can see, been cut and heat. So I like to put a little bit of a curve to it, like this. Now we have here the two side pieces for the chest armor. Uh, and again, went ahead, got our lines in the front, dribbled off the backs. Now we're going to move on to the chest piece, which is going to be done out of six millimeter foam. This piece is going to be six millimeter. <laughs> six millimeter. And this is the top of the armor, the neck guard as well. Piece here. And this piece at the back of the neck, again with the thinner foam. This is the floor mat foam, which is roughly about six millimeter. But again, six millimeter foam. And on this particular pattern, it says here, back of the neck thing, but it has a bevel out. And what I mean by that is when you trace this, as you can see I did right here, that when you cut this, see that bevel there? The tire pattern consists of, uh, I think it's uh, yeah, three parts, or one, two, three, no, about four parts. You have the tire, you have the side of the tire, which is this piece you just do twice, and then the tread, which is the angle, this is for the uh, outside edge, and then you have a trip for the inside edge. And we're gonna do this out of four millimeter foam. So I went ahead and cut my, a strip of four millimeter foam. And you guys come with a little bit of marks, you can see right here. I made my marks with a Sharpie, connected the lines, and I'm gonna take a wood burner and burn these lines in. But before we do that, I'm gonna soften these edges. So I got my Dremel ready. All right, now that the edges are all rounded, the next step is to take a metal ruler and take my wood burner, and I'm just gonna put a groove in the line. Okay, have the, uh, the two side pieces done. We got the three strips in the middle all cut again. This is all four millimeter foam. These are done, put these aside. We're going to move on to now the tire. On the actual tire part you see right here with this pattern, when cutting this out, I did a bevel edge on the inside. So you guys can see this right here. You bevel in on both sides. On the two tire pieces, you cut these out at 90. But again, before you do that, I just want to heat this up and just put a little bit of a curl to it. So now we have all our two millimeter parts. I like these guys. What I want to do though is I want to soften these edges just a little bit. Some people, if you like the crisp line, you can definitely have that. But for me, I like the just softening the edges just a little bit. Kind of makes it look a little more manufactured. We have all our two millimeter pieces cut and then dribble down and round on the edges. I'm gonna set these guys aside. Now we're going to proceed to glue. Got to start with my chest piece, some additional pieces here, and I'm going to glue these corners first. Scrap foam. Oof. I got my glue pot. Do a little glue in the corners. Take some scrap foam. There's the chest, and get this piece lined up right here. Wait till let's touch these guys together first. Get this edge here. You start from the bottom, right down that line. And come up like this, like that. Get this, line that up. Get the belly of the armor right here. Of course, you can see, line them up, start from the bottom. This piece goes right in here in the center. So, find the center. Here. So far, so good. Now, on these corners right here, I can tell you right now, uh, these spots here, let me go ahead and uh, let me just whack these off just a little bit more because the. Uh, the abdominal is going to come up in here, so I just want to whack off a little bit of the excess foam. Go ahead and pin this in place really quick to make sure I'm happy where it sits. Like that. A Sharpie line for now where to apply my glue. And just for extra safety, I'm going to make little registration marks. Make one here and make one there. All right, got these guys glued in. I got the kind of adhesive on the top. Now the reason I like to use conic adhesive for the uh, two millimeter foam is that uh, if you use super glue, sometimes people like to super glue two millimeter foam, but when you hit it with a heat gun, the edges you don't get glued down will curl up. But if you use conic adhesive, you got a guaranteed seal because I'm gonna go back and add some additional detail to it and heat, uh, heat shrink it 
that detail and it just works better when it's done with uh, kind of cohesive. That is our front chest piece. This looks great. Oh wait, one more part. <laughs> Got too excited here. This is the, uh, the neck bracer piece that goes right here on the front. I made uh, two different size uh, two millimeter rivets or rivets. Got this, it's going to jump onto the back. Now we have our back pieces. Let's start by gluing these two together. I noticed in the video game is a, the detail on this stuff has a little bit of a piping on it. Now, it's very faint and small. So what was my plan was I'm going to take a sharp X-Acto blade and cut the borders of these guys and do a little heat shrinking. So let's get a sharp blade for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my X-Acto blade and just follow the line of this guy. Gonna fire up the heat gun. All right guys, now you can see, look at all that detail. See a little fine line popping out there? Looks great. I got my little wood burner and you guys can see the little, this little nub right here. This came with my wood burning kits and it's a little bit of a dome and I like that so I'm gonna do some impressions on the round circles to make them look a little bit more like a little bit like rivets. So we're gonna do that on the back and our front piece armor. I have my, the wood burners nice and hot to show you the technique I like is I did the rivet detail right here um, and to give it a bit of depth, I take the wood burner and just push the center of it. See? A little bit of indentation to it. Now we're going to glue the tire together. We have our parts here and our treads. Again, this is where you line up the registration marks. Now our next step is on the tire, we're going to take the, uh, the tread. Now there's two treads here. You can see they have a little bit of the uh, the groove to them, uh, going at an angle. This is going to put on the outside edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that first. I'm going to apply glue right on the seam. We want to lay this dead center. This is I want to fall in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one side of it. As you can see right here, I'm going to do just one side because you want this to go right in the middle like this so you lay it like a quarter inch over the edge just like that now press it down make it really nice nice and connected good contact and then you take that edge you curl it down over this edge and you round it off see that gives a little bit of that uh, that rounded tire edge so we're gonna just put it so basically you're just gonna go right over the seam dead center uh, inside one's uh, first. We'll just drop where this falls in the center. Yes, yeah, so I'm kind of doing this all by eye, basically. <laughs> it leaves a little bit of a space on the edge, like this. The tread. Try to make it even. Now, again, uh, this is not as accurate as the tire from the video game. But I just wanted to make it look like a tire. So that I feel comfortable with. Is at least it looks like a tire. So right now, bring this guy right down the middle. All right, there it is. There is our, <laughs> our tire armor that will hang off the back of our steel armor. We're gonna move on to the back piece. I really, this is the, uh, the back neck guard here we have. I just had this from yesterday and I realized I forgot to glue this on. So let's do that. That's the back of the neck armor. Now, moving on. This piece uh, I made, which is kind of a triangular symmetrical looking thing here. Uh, I had a, somebody in stream come and tell me that this is the wasteland. So the theme of this armor was this is supposedly an edge of a propane tank. And I thought, of course it is, because it's the wasteland. People are taking metal from different things. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a revamp on this pattern to make this look more like, look kind of more like this for the uh, with holes in it to reproduce the edge of a propane tank. Thanks. 
I have some uh, piping, which is probably a, a little thicker than it needs to be, but the original propane tanks, they fold the metal over to make the handles, so it'd be nice to kind of get that little bit of an illusion. So I have some uh, piping on this, and we're going to go ahead and just glue this on there and round it off. That already looks a hundred times better, doesn't it? All right, buddy, there's the armor. It's all done. We have the chest piece, the back piece, neck guard, uh, and the neck guard of the front. We have our tire all done. Uh, my next step is I made these patterns. I made sure these patterns are all symmetrical. Now, in the video game, everything is battered and beaten to hell. As you can see, I made some sharpie marks on this. This is where I'm going to do some damage. I'm going to go in with a knife and cut some things uneven. Um, a lot of the holes you see are going to be uh, strapping, but I like the use of rope. In the video game, so I'm going to use rope and strips of leather to kind of give a little bit of realism to it. So I'm not going to fabricate them. I'm going to leave this all on and do that all at the same time when I'm painting it. So next step is we're going ahead and do some weathering and damage on this. Oh, there they are. Now they've been <laughs> rapidly aged. I took my rotary tool, sanding drum, sanding disc, and banged it all up, uh, got it pretty raw, and went in with a torch. You can see a lot of dark spots in it, kind of burn a little bit, of, but uh, it's helped to create the texture. Got, got all the fuzzies down, but hit it with a torch. Now it's all sealed up. The next trick I want to do is I want some welding. You look on the actual uh, fallout armor, the metal armor that is, there's weld marks. So my plan is I saw my friend SKS Props sent me some foam clay and he did some welding marks. And I thought, I've seen people do it with hot glue and quick seal, but I watched him do it with foam clay. And I thought, what a great trick. Let's take the wood burner. I want to burn a trench. Now I have my foam clay. I'm gonna go ahead and wet it with my fingertips. Knead it a little bit. But I find that the foam clay sticks better if the foam is wet. So I'm gonna take a, a brush, wet the foam up. All right, and stuff that. Now the, the uh, wood burn trench is for me to help the clay stick. Let's create some weld marks. Yeah, this wood tool is a lot softer. So. I think the foam clay welds look great. This is going to work out perfectly. Go ahead and let this dry and uh, thanks Stephen for the tip. I went ahead and glued the tire tread on the back of the arm. I kind of keep it all contained and I'll go back uh, once it's all sealed and do like ropes and straps on this to make it look like it's being held with straps. But this is coming to go, uh, together awesome. I'm really happy with it. But I realized as I was making it, you know what's missing are the shoulder pieces. I went ahead and made shoulder patterns for those. I'm going to show you how to put those together. And here, there, go ahead. This is the, uh, and you notice there's some circles, and these are the placements for the spikes. So you have circles for that, a little half circle. So be sure when you trace this out, like I did here, you have the circles trace. So you'll, that's where you know you're going to put your spikes. So we have these. Let's go ahead and do a little heat curl before we glue them together. Now that we have these heat curled, let's go into the bicep armor. There's the bicep armor. This is the piece that hangs just underneath the shoulder pad. As you can see, I have the lines traced out right here. I went ahead and traced onto foam. I cut 90 here, but on the edges, these are beveled cuts on both sides. And again, these lines, you flip on the back, cut your trenches. And so when you heat form, you can bend these. So let's go ahead and do that as well. All right, that is now heat curled and shaped up. Moving on to the forearm armor. Same thing, this is the forearm again. I'm only gonna make one of these because I'm gonna have my right arm covered with metal, but my left arm is gonna have my pit boy. Uh, went ahead, the same technique. I cut this out, transfer the lines, cut in the back, the trenches, heat it, shaped it, just like this. And this is done now too. So let's go ahead and move on to gluing. There you go, that's the top of the shoulder. This looks great. Uh, I realized this texture back here, I'm gonna glue this to the uh, bicep piece I have right here, but uh, I've always found that you wanna break up this texture on the foam. There is our shoulder piece. Now, of course, this is supposed to be a wasteland metal armor piece, so the next step I usually do is I go back in with my Dremel, 
And I usually like using the sanding drum and my, whoop, where'd it go? There's it, my little uh, round stone bit for divots. So we can bash it up. So that's what we're gonna do. And there it is. This is the shoulder piece, uh, all damaged. Really is great and really effective. And the other thing it's missing is the spikes. So I made the circles, registration marks for the spikes. And how we make the spikes is uh, I cut a little strip, about a quarter inch of foam. It's a little square. And I take a knife and kind of whack it at an angle, flip it, come at an angle. And again, each one you do make it a little bit different because the illusion is it's supposed to be like a chunks of metal that somebody ground down. So. That's how I went about making the spikes. Let's see, flatten off the bottom a little bit. And I advise that you do all the damage first before you put the spikes on. That's why I do this last because if you have spikes on, it's kind of hard to get in here. So I went ahead, damaged it, put the welds on, and the very last thing is putting on spikes. As you can see, I made a bunch of them right here. Now, some people like to use super glue, but for this, I'm gonna use some kind of adhesive. So I'm gonna hit my spots. All right, there it is, the shoulder with the cool spikes. Once this gets sealed, it's gonna end up paint jobs and look like metal. Uh, the little trick I learned from my friend, uh, Steven over at SKS Props, is uh, anything with foam tips and spikes, even though it's foam, you wanna stiffen up a little bit. And I've seen him do this with super glue. It's usually better to have something a little bit thinner. But right now I have my, uh, my Zappa Gap. I'm just gonna dab a little glue on the tips and smear it out with some foam just to kind of work it in. And what that does, it'll stiffen up the tip. Now granted, it is super glue, so it will get pretty stiff, but it's still foam. It just, you do this before you seal it and it helps keep the tips sharp. Uh, it won't be sharp enough to hurt anybody, but sharp enough because I've had stuff where I've made foam spikes and kept them just rubber. And over time, they just wore off. So this trick is really great and it really helps stiffen up the spikes. Now this is done, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make another one of these and I'm going to battle up this uh, forearm piece. And after this, we will start sealing. All right, before we start sealing this, I'm gonna show you some little quick changes I made to it. Um, I'm going to make this attach with uh, Velcro, as you can see here, right here. I put the soft side in, hook side out, I put some tape over this, I'm gonna coat this whole thing with the rubber. I'm going to latch it with Velcro. These guys are here for decorations. Uh, these are actually six millimeter foam. I went and did the uh, uh, aluminum foil technique to make it look like leather. Put some little snaps on it. So the gag is they'll Velcro on here and they'll kind of overlap a little bit, but I'm gonna put a slight curl to them with some heat. But um, you can see the tires glued on. I did the straps and of course did some, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, I did some uh, weld, took uh, the wood burner and made little holes like uh, leather stitching on it. So now that it's all uh, closed up, so let's go ahead and start coating this with some rubber. There it is, it's all sealed. I went ahead and put a black base of acrylic on it because our next step is gonna be painting. And that's gonna be pretty uh, in depth, so I'm gonna make that a completely different video. In that video, we're not only going to paint it, we're gonna put it in straps and snaps. I'm gonna show you how I go about doing that as well. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you wanna get these patterns, go to my website, eviltedsmith.com. While you're at it, do your shopping through my Amazon links, helps me keep making videos, and get on my mailing list. Uh, keep you guys up to date to where I'll be next, what con I'll be at, and what's coming up in the wonderful world of videos. Thank you so much for watching. This video is done from my live stream I do on twitch.tv slash eviltedsmith every other Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m., uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you guys want to come in and hang out and catch me live, ask me questions, it'd be awesome. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live.